Getting a good sword print requires a good sword split, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. The first stop on our sword splitting journey will be the scaling rotation and alignment to bed of the sword, since that is very difficult to do in Blender. So go into Kirimoto, delete any objects in your workspace, and import the sword in question. This one, as it turns out, is quite large, so we're going to need to scale that down to something a little more reasonable. There we go. Um, if we look at this sword, we're going to notice that it isn't aligned to the bed and that's going to create a problem for us. So what you do is you right click on a flat surface and say a lay flat and that will align it flat to the bed. If you right click on the wrong face and say lay flat, that's obviously not going to work for us. So make sure you select a face that is going to be coplanar that you want to be coplanar with the Z or the bed and that you're going to split it on. The next thing you can do is um, use the shift arrow keys to rotate in five degree increments to get you roughly where you want to be in terms of the print. And at this point, you can just right click export and save that um, as the file we're going to then import into Blender. So that's going to be our next step. The next step is to bring in our scale rotated sword into Blender and split it. When you come into Blender for the first time, you're going to have a couple of things you want to get rid of. So hit the A key, maybe twice, X, delete, then file, import, STL, locate the file that we saved out of Kiri <clears throat> and bring it in here. The um, middle click does rotation and shift middle click does panning. The sword is selected by default when you bring it in, and one thing I've found is that uh, Blender doesn't like working with objects so large. You'll see why maybe in a minute, but the first thing we do is hit the S key and then scale it down a little bit. Maybe a couple times if you need to. Um, we don't want it to be too large um, because the um, when we start to generate synthetic objects, they uh, tend to like disappear like that. So. Once you've got this like this, the next thing we're going to do is tab into edit mode, find a vertex like this, make sure that we're in vertex editing mode here, click it to select that vertex and then shift D to duplicate it and then shift Z to constrain it and to the Z axis. And that way it's going to be in the plane that we want to split. With that selected, we're going to hit E for extrude and Y or X to constrain it to the X axis. And then the L key will select with your mouse near this white selected vertex. L key will select the line and then E to extrude it. We want to constrain that to the Y axis and now we've created a plane and now again with your mouse hovering near this white selected vertex L to select the entire plane. Now we can scale this with the S key. Make sure that your mouse is near the middle of the plane S and then scale it up till it covers the entire sword. And then we're going to E extrude down and click. And again, now with your mouse near this L to select the entire set of connected vertices and then P to partition or separate the points from the sword and the, uh, the block that we just generated. And you'll see over on the right hand side, we have the sword and this dot one, which is the separated out block. And now we're going to go tab back into object mode, click on the sword itself and apply a Boolean operation here under the gear icon, a wrench icon modifier, Boolean. We're going to do a difference between the sword and the block. You need to click self and then under object, we're going to select the block and then click apply. If we hide the block, you'll see that it has been split, but the block is still there. So we need to click on it and X delete it. There's one last step. Now that we have our split sword. And if we go back tab into um, edit mode, Click it, click on the sword and tab back. You'll see that uh, this hasn't been split yet. So we need to actually go in and triangulate this. So 
select it, triangulate, apply. There we go. Tab switches back and forth between edit and view modes. And now we're ready to export this. File, export, STL. And we're going to call this fixed sword. Save it. And we're going to go back into Kirimoto now. Once we're back in Kirimoto, we're going to delete the old sword and import the new fixed sword. It's a little bit small because we scaled it down um, in Blender. So we can make this uh, as big as we want again. And uh, we're ready to actually, we need to select our CR30 our belt printer, rotate it however you want, A key for a range, and then scale it however large you want to, let's make that 200, there we go, however large you want it for your print, and um, it now lays flat on the bed as expected, and will generate appropriate brims and things like that when we slice. All right. I hope this has been useful. I look forward to your comments and feedback below. Uh, let me know if there are any changes you'd like to see or things need to be clarified. Thanks for your time.